just going to be vaping this apiary again because I've got some high mite levels in still and I want to give them another treatment. This is the second one of three over 15 days. So this act, this apiary is not very accessible. You see but shrub up there, my truck is just behind that. And because it's been raining so much and the ground's absolutely sodden, I daren't bring my truck in because I'll never get out again. So I convert to using my battery. And rather than just having the inverter on the truck, I have it off a battery and I can get about 40 vapes out of this at least. I've never tried more than 40, it's all I've ever needed to do. But I've got a standard 65 ampere hour battery, then that goes to an inverter, 500 watt inverter. My sublimox there is only a 200 watt sublimox, that's the standard size, but having a 500 watt inverter means you don't struggle. And the thing I find is rather than using the Varox vaporizer, I was obliged to let that cool down each time and then reheat it where with the sublimox all you're doing is heating it up once properly and then all that happens is the battery and the inverter just maintain that heat it clicks on and off with the lights. Now I'll show you in another video, uh, another clip I mean, that uh, you can see the light clicking on and off. You can't hear what I'm saying that well because of the noise but I can turn this on now and you can hear there's a little bit of noise. And that's the noise of my inverter the fan running. And then on top of that, I've got two lights here. You can see one green light for the sublimox that's saying it's uh, running. And the other one, the yellow orange one on the left saying that it's basically heating up. Now when that heats up in a few minutes time, about five, six minutes, it's pretty quick actually. Then all it does is maintain the heat in it. And then you can use the sublimox as much as you like. I heat it up with the cap on because it obviously heats up quicker. So there you go. I basically leave that there for five minutes, get everything organized. You see, I blocked off the rear of my hives with, we use this, luckily we've got a plastic uh, tray on, the, on a, a plastic base, and we can just slide this in to block off the escaping gas. The weather is calm, it's about seven degrees, it's absolutely perfect conditions actually. And what I do is I foam off the front of the hives. So all I do then is I actually push the nozzle into the front like that, well, you push it in like this, get it ready, push it on its side, and then I just flip it over, and in goes the gas. And then it's really expelled in about uh, 20, 20 seconds, 25 seconds. If your machine isn't doing it in that quick enough, there's something wrong with your machine or your power supply. I actually struggled for a little while because I was using a generator that wasn't up to revolution speed, and I was actually really struggling to sublimate the stuff properly, and I was thinking there was something wrong with the sublimox, and I was going down that road, but actually there wasn't. Anyway, there you go. I'll show you another clip in a minute of me actually doing it. But all you do then is you walk away, leave it 10, 10 minutes if you need to, and then just take off the foam after. And, and the bees are completely treated. They've had a really good dose of the sublimate. And then you can come down in a few days time and then check your, uh, check your, um, your mite drop if you do think you're gonna have any. Obviously you should monitor it and for me, an alcohol wash isn't an option. One, I know I've got mites, and two, I don't want to open the hive too much this time of year because it's another load of stress for the bees. So we've got a few dead bees in front of the hives, but that is actually there from the last six to eight weeks, so I'm not overly concerned. And these hives were late in being treated, so we've got some Varroa death, I know that. But hey ho, we can't be everywhere all the time. One of the things you really do need to invest in is a decent mask, okay? So this is a twin filter, carbon and uh, high level, filtrate mask. I never ever smell anything through this so I'm really happy and I know what oxalic acid is like. It's pretty nasty stuff if you're inhaling it and you'll cough straight away. I never cough, I never splutter. You can relax when you're wearing your mask. You have no issues whatsoever. So get a good mask before you start using this stuff because you get clouds of it everywhere and you will get it in your lungs. A friend of mine who I know he will admit to it, he got pneumonia about a week after he vaped all his highs. Whether that's because of his vaping, I don't know, but I wouldn't want to risk that. So anyway, invest, it's best. So also wear my full bee suit and good gloves because having gloves on means you're not getting the odd sting from the bee if they do come out the front. And also you've got less chance of burning yourself. Now these aren't flame protection gloves, they'll melt if they get in contact, but it gives you a little bit of a, a buffer between, sometimes you do touch a hot part of the Varox, which is fine, this will just cope with the with that for a few seconds. It's not um, say, a way thing to rely on, it just gives you that little bit of a buffer. Okay. Another little tip I found, when you buy your sublimox, it comes with a really cool spoon. That means you can pick up 
your 2.5 grams or 2 grams of uh, sublimate. I use uh, obviously pure oxalic acid crystals. In the UK, you might well find you have to use your epibioxal. That goes in there like that. And then obviously that goes, I can't really show you one hand. Put it on here, that then clicks over. And you can already see the little bit of vapor come out the side. So that's ready now. So all I've got to do, I'm just standing away from the wind so you can see this. There you go, that's what you want. All gone in about 15 seconds. Exactly what you want. So always work with the wind. If there is any slight breeze, there is a little bit. And then you're covered. It's not good to get it in your eyes either. But in that, I've heard people wearing uh, goggles and everything. I I personally don't do that. I just stay away from it. But obviously, you don't want to do it without a mask on. In it goes. You can probably hear that there. A little tap on top, but I'm holding the uh, camera at the moment, so it's uh, not always easy. Yeah, it's finished. You see, Okay, we'll lose a tiny bit out the front, but overall the cloud inside is absolutely huge. You can see the bees coming out of white. They're all absolutely covered in it. That's what I want to see. Obviously the foam is brilliant because it does mask most of the, uh, the escaping gas. And there's no point in doing this not properly. You've got here, you've got all the kit, you've got unpacked. You're here, you might as well do it properly once if you want good control. Otherwise you're just wasting your time. You might as well use an amateurs on your summer, which is another issue. Anyway, there you go. I hope that's some help to you. So you can see my uh, battery stays in there. I do four hives at a time, put the bar barrel in the middle, walk backwards when I've done the two, then do foam up the next two. That's how it works for me. You can see the one I did about five minutes ago, still got vapors coming out. That's what you want. You want it absolutely sealed up. Look at that. Those mites are going to be falling off there, and I'll do that again. This is the second treatment out of three, and I'll do it again in another five to six days. So I'm pleased with that. That's a good control. I want my bees cleaner than this, and I'm, I admit I'm late this year getting my bees clean. As I said before, I can't be everywhere all the time. But I hope that's some help to you. That's how I do mine. So I've gone from using a Varox, which I had for the first two or three years, which is a super piece of kit. As I said before, you are uh, really, you have to call the Varox down between each treatment. And when you get more than 50 highs, Varox becomes a big time taker. And um, a, a great little machine it is. You really can't afford that kind of time when you become a higher number beekeeper. It's just so time consuming. Everything takes time and you're always rushing, always out of time. And anything you can do like this, getting a machine that's more efficient, is always a better bet. So also, I just wanted to show you this, that you can see, even though I did this hive about six minutes ago, it's still leaking vapor. So as I come back up the line, the hives are just done. That one there's got more coming out. That one there's got more, even more. And this one I've just obviously done about a minute ago. But it just shows you how well sealed up your hives need to be. You can't just think, because you've got a decent machine, that you're going to have the same effect as if you had a Varox. You still have to seal it up. You still have to make use of everything you've got to get the best possible seal. Don't forget, you want all that sublimate to cover everything inside the hive. 
and all the bees and all the combs and everything. So by the time they've cleaned it off and they've cleaned it all out and the oxalic acid has become sort of just failed to work anymore, those mites that came in contact with it over the next five days will then die of starvation because their mouth parts will be nicely burnt and that's what causes them to fall. So, take heed. Close your hives up well still. It's still worth taking the absolute maximum to get the best results. So while I'm here, we'll just have a very quick look inside. I've just literally just about 10 seconds ago vaped this one. So uh, off comes the polystyrene. There's my bees underneath now. Let's see what they're doing. So lift this up and you'll see there's the oxalic acid. Okay, well that's my partition there. These are on seven frames, but you can see all the bees are white. Completely covered in it. Which is what you want. You can see there's a good colony. They've all been sublimated really well. Look at those white bees up there. Look, can you see those through the... Uh, let's have a look here. Like, look. So they're all nice and white inside. That's what you want. Everything has had a good dousing with it. And these bees are actually being really nice. Mind you, I think they're beyond anything else at the moment for the next few minutes. There you go, that's what you want anyway, a good treatment.